Right, Sam, you have more good news. What were the scores on the doors for the yeah. last round? I'll give you a quick run through. You, my friend, got seven points. Okay. Virtue of a three pointer for calling Mill one, Huddersfield one. A highly I creative actually... prediction, that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your seven points, you got that on the nose and you got four other results correct, not score lines. I actually got six results correct, which I think is pretty good going this week. So that's half correct, right? Um, but by virtue of your on the nose at the den, seven points for Ben, six points for me, which leaves it 26, 22 in your favour, four points in it, Ben. Nice cushion for you. It's just epic, though, isn't it? I love how it's chat. I, I was a bit concerned when you said you're going to aggregate the scores because, like the um the week that was quiz, you just I thought you were just going to be miles ahead by about three weeks in. But I'm holding my own at the moment. I'm sure there's going to be one week where one of us bangs out three correct results and zooms into unassailable leads. But um, let's get into this then, and I will bring up the fixtures. We've got two Friday night games, uh, Sam. Um, I'll go first on Bristol City versus Hull. And all is rosy and happy in the garden at Hull with the new contract for uh, Rosinha. And Twine was our worldy of the week. But Bristol City got a good win against Sunderland, although Max O'Leary did make a couple of mega saves in that game. So I'm going to go all square. I'll start with a fun one. Both teams to score. Desmond, uh, Bristol City 2, Hull 2, Sam. Yeah, I just, given what I said earlier about Hull's attacking prowess, I probably just think they maybe got a little bit more in that department at the moment. And I think that's fair, given that, you know, Bristol City's winner over Sunderland was a, a spot kick. And as you said, I mean, those saves from O'Leary, we probably have to introduce save of the week, don't we? So I'll go for, yeah, slightly rare away win because the home wins have been racking up, but I'll go for Hull to get it right on the road. One. Two, and you've got managerless Swansea versus um, manager under pressure in Ryan Lowe at Preston. Sam Swans Preston. Yeah, just a quick kind of glimpse down the fixtures. If I was to part with forty of my hard-earned cash, forty pounds, it's probably the game I'd least like to go to this one. <laughs> I think. So for for that reason and that thought process i don't think all is well at swansea i think there's frustration at missing out on on davis i think that's still still the case it certainly looked like he'd rebuffed the approach last time i'd, I'd had a little look and yeah preston better for 45 minutes and then woeful for 45 minutes i'm going to go for i think i think both teams will score so i'm going to go for a 1-1 one, one. I might go tactically then, Sam. Shall I go nil F in nil? Because I'm not feeling massively positive about either side. And you said both teams to score. So I'll I'll go for it not to happen. By the way, you'd know you'll not find Sam Parkin um parting with 40 pounds of his hard earned cash. He is in the hospitality, he is in the press box at every game you'll you'll find him in the in the lovely seats doing God's work for talk sport and Chelsea TV. I thought, I thought you were going to tell me how out of touch I am with the average fan there because <laughs> yeah. I got the ticket price in. Oh, mate. No, Liberty so far off. 47 for um, Leeds Ipswich in the away end there. So um, hmm. you are not wrong at all. And speaking of that game, that's where we'll land. And it is me first, Sam. Lead zip switch. Oh my god. Um, I'm a bit concerned about this one. I think that big Ellen Road crowd, if they can take the lead in the first 30 minutes of this one, might roll leads onto a victory. I think they might go two up and then Ipswich get one back. So, as much as it pains me, and I don't like it in the slightest, I went with my heart last week. I'm going with my head this week, Sam. I'm going for two one to Leeds. What are you saying? Leeds zip switch. Yeah, that feels about right. I mean, has there been more than four goals in any of Ipswich's away games off the top of your head? Can you think of any? Keep talking and I'll try and think. 2-2 two, two at Birmingham, wasn't there? Yeah, there you go. 
two two at Birmingham, but you know they've been pretty watertight away from home. Bit of a I don't yeah. know if it's a yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a different approach. I would I would suggest I can't I can't for the life see that happening again. I think Leeds are going to go for it. I'm going to go for Leeds to win by three goals to two, virtue of what you've said. Three goals to two. The thriller uh, mm. predicted by parking at Elland Road there. And we'll stick with you then, Sam. Blackburn mm. versus Watford. Blackburn versus Watford should be good fun. And I'm just going to go for Watford to continue this form. I think both teams will score. I don't think Blackburn know any other way to play open, expansive. I'm going to go for Watford to do something similar to which they did at, at Preston. I'm going to go for a 3-1 away win. Oh, I got Blackburn so wrong last week, Sam. I had them winning 4-3 at Southampton in one of my comedy picks and they lost 4-0. To be fair, they did go down to 10 men. Uh, so I feel like owe it to the Rovers fans to back Blackburn this week. So I will do just that. It's got to be both teams to score, hasn't it? Or has it? Blackburn 2, <laughs> Watford nil. We'll go for a Blackburn clean sheet out of absolutely nowhere. And uh, it's Leicester versus Rotherham. And obviously, when we get top versus bottom with top at home, Sam, it tends to um, only go one way in the prediction. So I'm going to go heavy on Leicester. Leicester 3, Rotherham nil. What do you reckon? Uh, I'm going to eclipse you there. Mate, I'm going to go 5 nil. Wow. So we will give Sam a bonus point as it's um, as it's a five-goal um, deficit if he gets that one. So that one's worth four points too if that one comes in. Shall I just soften um, it and say, sorry, Rotherham fans, and remember <laughs> when I did them as the Parkins pick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, mate, I, it's more a comment on Leicester than Rotherham, I think. Yeah, it? let's not get into it now, but... I think it's probably a conversation we need to have over the next couple of weeks if results don't go Rotherham's way. Because I, th I feel like I've got a few things I want to get off my chest about maybe the, the recent goings on there. Oh, I like that cliffhanger as well, Sam. <laughs> uh, we're going to stick with you then. Uh, Borough versus Baggies. Yeah, I'd maybe going to just put that cup victory at, at Port Vale kind of into the mix here. For Middlesbrough, um, they'll probably get a nice little plum draw if you can call a semi final draw plum because there's you know, not many options. But yeah, if they're to draw Chelsea, Liverpool, those games come around quite quickly. They're not in brilliant form, although they won at, at Swansea. West Brom a bit patchy recently, but I think they'll be too strong here. I'm going to go for a 3 1 West Brom win. 3-1 West Brom. Um, feels, quite, feels quite bold, that, now I've said it. But, yeah. <laughs> You're regretting it. I'd, yeah, I'd um, like to look how many times West Brom have scored three away from home. Preston. Yeah, I would, they scored three I at was, Preston, didn't they? I think. I was going to go a bit tighter than that. I will go right down the middle. I haven't had a 1F in one yet, so I'll, I'll, I'll throw one of those in there and uh, maybe... Uh, yeah, maybe some kind of last 10 minutes equaliser from either side in that for a 1-1 one, one draw. Now, you might see a YouTuber with millions of subscribers and views a week driving a Bentley. It's a bit more modest, I have to say, when you're covering the championship. So if you can find a few quid each month to support over on Patreon or by hitting the join button here, you are making the world of difference for myself, Shaley and Enid. On we go. It is Norwich versus Huddersfield. Now... There's been a lot of uh, David Brent singing Born to Run after Chris Finch throws Tim's shoes over a pub and what the real quiz is after the East Anglian derby. But I don't think Norwich will be anywhere near as defensive at home to Huddersfield, David Wagner's former team. I think Huddersfield will be pretty defensive in this one. So I think Norwich should just have enough star power to win this by one goal, Sam. So I'm going to go Norwich 1, Huddersfield nil, And you're going to follow up my prediction. Yeah, I think you know, Huddersfield have scored a few late goals, haven't they? And um, 
team to master the art of drawing 1-1. I think that luck's going to run out if it has been luck. I think it will be slightly more comfortable. I'm going to go for Norwich to be buoyant after that point. 2-0 to Norwich. And good luck with this one. The most unknown quantity. We discussed it earlier in the show. What are Plymouth going to be like without Schumacher? They're at home to Birmingham, Sam. Away you go. Oh, yeah. I, I'm a little bit concerned about this one. You know, yes, the managerial situation, of course, but maybe more so the potential to be missing the strikers. Although... Whitaker and Azaz do counteract that and bring so much. You could possibly play Ben Wayne, but you could play one of those aforementioned, maybe in a slightly different role. I was going to go for an away win here, but I'm going to soften. I'm going to go for them to drop points, though. I'm going to go for it to be a slightly tepid performance and a 1-1. Am I allowed to double you up? Yeah. I'm going to double you up then. I'm going to hedge my bets and we'll find out um, about Argyle over the next few weeks. But none of us are any the wiser at the moment. Ooh, Sam's luck. QPR versus Southampton. Southampton in good, good form. Can QPR get a point here, Sam? I don't think so. Uh, QPR one, Southampton two. What do you think? I tried to articulate myself about just how hard it is to go on unbeaten runs and winning runs. And mm. I think QPR have been unlucky. That was Southampton I was referring to there. But QPR have been unlucky. Not sure they should have lost at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, they played against, what, 10 men and a really, a really uh, you know, well-performing um, defence against Plymouth last time out. So that was unfortunate. I think 11 v 11, that could have been as mad as that sounds. That may have been a different game. So I think they've been a slightly unfortunate. And I think they'll get something here. I'm going to go Desmond. 2-2. Two, two. And uh, you're going to be up next, Sam, with improving Sheffield Wednesday with a home game against Cardiff. Can they get another good result? Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been really impressed with Danny Roll uh, even before the, the results started to turn. So this has not shocked me. Obviously, they're giving themselves an incredible amount of work to do. But I fancy them here again. I think Cardiff have, I was going to say they've blown up. I wouldn't go that far, but they've certainly, their early season form has plateaued. Um, I think they'll lose again here. They weren't good. I think, you know, created absolutely nothing at Hull City last time out. I think it'll be possibly tighter than that, but I'm going to go for Sheffield Wednesday to win 2-1. I was going to say that, and I'm now not going to because I don't want to double you up again. So I will agree with your sentiment, and it's going to be interesting if Wednesday do win again, isn't it? So I'll back it to happen then. Sheffield Wednesday won, Cardiff nil, and I've got three words for you, Sam. New manager bounce. Um, it's Stoke versus Millwall. Um, I suppose Joe Edwards had that in his first game, winning 4 nil. Let's back. Stephen Schumacher um, for no other reason other than the cliche because there's no chance he gets his ideas across in two days but mm. that's what everybody says isn't it uh, Stoke 2 Millwall nil. what do you reckon oh, I just think I'm just seeing enthusiasm noise a few more bums on seats I think it'll be nil nil. I think it'll be a draw <laughs> And I think I'm not going to do Stephen Schumacher's accent, but I think it will just be loads loads of light, loads of positives. Couldn't quite convert, you know, a starting point. Nil-nil. And a starting point for Mick Beal in our final game here. And it's not a fun opponent. Um, Coventry, uh, not an easy uh, team to play against when they want to... Close the game out. Are they going to be able to do that up at Sunderland, Sam? Well, I'm going to show remarkable consistency here. And I could just replay everything I've just said about Stephen Schumacher. I <laughs> think it's going to be the same. But I think both these teams are clearly... Um, I mean, Stoke are as well. But I think these two teams are more than capable of hurting the opponent. Good attacking players. I think they'll both score. And I think it'll be a draw. And I think it'll be, yeah, get to 1-1 whichever way it happens, and then, you know, probably the home side 
yeah, be relatively content with that in the first game under a new manager, 1-1. And this is one that has been quite tasty, hasn't it, the last few years? I seem to remember a bit of a rivalry developing between Sunderland and Coventry in the League One days and playing out some 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 really good fixtures. So, yeah, probably a good first game for him in terms of the atmosphere, the amount of travelling supporters and all that. I was going to hedge and go 1-1. So I'm not going to now. Should we back Mick Beal? So I so I go new manager bounce on both games then. Um, let's go Sunderland 1, Coventry nil. There you go, everybody. Those are the latest round of predictions. Um, obviously, no live chat this week. So we will clip this out as ever. And we love you to get involved down there in the comments. There's only one rule, Sam. They're predictions. You've got to get them in before the games happen. We're not interested in anyone being wise after the event. It's hard enough to be wise anytime, but not after the event. Come on, get involved uh, beforehand.